Okay, so yes, I think this is cute. We have a box of books generously donated by Sasami Chan, and I'm going to draw another one by lot. Okay, which means I should probably grab from a different part of the box. And today's book is oh, another Disney, Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse, and Pluto Pup. Hmm. Hello, and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Assuming that the video that we did actually got put together and stuff, you've already seen what this book is and where it came from. But I'm going to say it again anyways. We are looking at a book generously donated by a viewer. Thank you, Sasami-chan. Probably going to get tired of hearing that. <laughs> but not us. We're very appreciative. Very. And that is a very nice cover. Yes, it is. Back from the days when Golden Books only cost 39 cents. This is Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse and Pluto Pup. Told by Elizabeth Beecher. Pictures by the Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Campbell Grant. Oh, huh. wonder if it was like an animation or something for it to be adapted from something. It could be from a cartoon. Hmm. I wonder if it's the introduction of Pluto. I don't think it is. Mickey Mouse came down the stairs whistling. He planned on a fine day's fishing with his loyal Pluto pup. Ah. He fixed a big dog breakfast in Pluto pup's own bowl. Then he whistled for Pluto at the back of the door. But Pluto did not come. Hmm. Also on the previous page, there was a, just a picture of Mickey Mouse walking down the stairs with a um, grandfather clock in the background, I believe. Mm, no, it's one of those hanging clocks. Big hanging clocks. And there's Mixie. Mixie? There's Mickey fixing the dog food. Though I just noticed something about the art style. It's kind of this weird off perspective kind of style where the perspective is very flat, but you still have angles. What's really funny is I, I look at this little shadow here that I'm pretty sure is a dog but from this angle and the way the front part is shaded off I was thinking raptor no it's supposed to say Fido on it and then we have the puppo biscuits mm. and a bone on the table and a big jar of milk and a salt shaker and a pepper grinder why would you need those for dog food I think they're just normally on the table ah and why is the bone there because dogs and bones, that's, like, people act like dogs eat bones. They like chewing on them, but... Especially fresh ones that have actual marrow. Just, you have to be careful about any meat and rancid and spoilage. Mickey looked everywhere for Pluto. Then he noticed the back gate was open. Yep. Aha, thought Mickey. That's the answer. Pluto's gone to see Minnie, I bet. So Mickey Mouse jumped into his car and drove to Minnie's house. I think I see where this story is going. <laughs> He's going to go everywhere and find out Pluto's back at his house. And we're going to get all of his friends in the jalopy, all looking together. Even yeah. though it makes more sense to split up. Uh, once again, that kind of flat perspective, it's kind of interesting. To, I think it would be like a one-point perspective, I think. Though it doesn't have any, um, it's not any converging lines, it's just straight. I came for Pluto, Mickey said, when Minnie came to the door. Is he here? Why, no, said Minnie. Do you suppose he's lost? I'll come and help you look for him. That Minnie doesn't look too happy in that particular shot. Well, that's a smile. Yeah, but from my angle, it also looks like the lines they used to define her eyes are also the eyebrows being down, like, hmm. So Mickey and Minnie jumped into the car and drove to Donald Duck's house where Donald was out raking leaves. We've come for Pluto, they told Donald Duck. Is he here with you? It always seems odd that they're leading with, we've come for Pluto, is he here? Why Would do you automatically assume the dog is at a friend's house? I can see that with the child. Yeah, wouldn't it be better to go, have you seen Pluto? We're looking for him. Also, that's a nice picture of Donald. Very classic, he has his hand out going, hi, and he's holding the rake. Oh. Over his shoulder, so obviously he's stopped raking to greet them. Why no, said Donald. Is he lost? I'll help you look for him. So Donald Duck jumped into the car. 
we actually understand him. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't try to do any... Accent? Yeah, in the writing, so it's very straightforward. Hey, Uncle Donald! Hey, Uncle Mickey! Where are you going? There came Donald's nephews. One, two, three. Huey, Louie, and Dewey on the run. Hmm. Change the order. Oh, the order may not have been set at this point. Hmm. We're going to look for Pluto, Donald said. Can't we come along? Okay, said Mickey. So in they piled. And they all rode over to Clarabelle Cows. Piled on in is correct. That car's going to get so full. Again, I'd like to point out, if you're all together, you're not maximizing your looking potential. Yep. This is just an excuse to get everyone in the car. And see how many Disney characters we can fit into the book. Clarabelle Cow was out picking tomatoes. She straightened up and waved when she saw them. Hello, she called. How are you all? Fine, called the nephews, but we can't find Pluto Pup. Oh dear, said Clarabelle. I'll help you look for him. So into the car she came. Nicely picking tomatoes. There's a farm in the background. K kind of, yeah. Yeah. Cow. Farm. And she has a bell around her neck. Very classic style. Also, over here, it looks like De Dewey has Minnie's flower in his mouth. A little bit. Also, Clarabelle's one of the ones you don't see as much in the modern animations. No. Though the perspective is, like, slowly getting better? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's this weird combination. Like, the... I guess it's because all the characters are sitting in it that the perspective and setup of the motor vehicle itself has to be more accurate to be able to fit all of them in it later. Soon they met Goofy on the street. Gosh, said Goofy, where are you folks all headed for today? Looking for Pluto, Mickey called. Have you seen Pluto Pup? Nope, said Goofy, but I'll help you look for him. Come along, said Mickey, and Goofy came. I just figured it out. The backgrounds aren't important, so they're done quickly, but the car and the characters are what's important, so they're, um, there's a little bit more time paid attention to them. Though they did take time to put some text, because there's cafe, sale, fumo, the something for you. It looks like C-O-A-R, which doesn't make sense. Also, there's a vacancy. It might be a U, since it's fumo. But that still didn't seem to make a real word. And then for rent. I think there was a place that said hobo. Or hobie. H-O-B-E. And then it cuts off. You can see there's another letter. Mm. Oh, that's another character we don't see that often anymore. Uh, you know, I think they just kind of narrowed it down to what seemed to be most popular and could translate the best over time. Though, if I recall correctly, both of them were actually in the Three Musketeers movie. Hmm. Though, depending on your level of Disney fandom, that may be a movie you don't want to talk about. <laughs> Pluto might have gone to Horace Horsecaller's house, said Minnie. We'll soon see, Mickey said. Oh, I didn't realize Horace was an Esquire. Wow. <laughs> Horace had not seen Pluto Pup, but he was glad to come along to look. Oi. I guess this is going to turn into a picnic at one point. Possibly. Or they all go fishing together. Okay, the dog show? <sighs> okay. All around the town they drove. Mickey drove very slowly, and they whistled and they called. But Pluto never answered them. Wait, cried the nephews all at once. Stop here a minute. Uncle Mickey, please? Mickey stopped. They all listened. Sure enough... From a big tent came all sorts of woofs and barks. The dog show, cried Mickey. Why didn't we think of that? Did you even know it was in town? And why is it in a tent? Well, the town may not have a place big enough to hold the show. Hmm. Or the place is big enough may not want to have a bunch of dogs inside. Yeah. He parked the car and they all hurried in. The dog show was almost over. Blue ribbons had been given to the best of the spaniels, the best of the terriers, to the best of the poodles, and work dogs and hounds. Now there was just one blue ribbon left. It was for the most popular dog in the show. The best of show, if it were? No, most popular is not an actual kennel club designation, but... Also, yellow gloves. I'm hoping they're yellow gloves. 
the judge, he, his hands are behind his back and they're yellow. Bright yellow. Well, it probably helps with the contrast because his uh, jacket is a dark charcoal color. Mm, and he looks to be a dog himself, brown. That's kind of interesting. The anthropomorphic dogs are judging the actual dogs. As the dogs started marching past the judge's platform, who should come marching along with the rest but Mickey Mouse's Pluto pup? Pluto! cried Mickey. There he is! cried Mickey's friends. And Pluto pup was wild with joy. He jumped and cavorted. He rolled his eyes and flapped his ears. Everyone at the dog show began to laugh and clap. Soon Pluto had a blue ribbon all his own for being the most popular dog in the show. <laughs> okay, well, this went somewhere I didn't expect it to. Yeah, yeah, wasn't really expecting to end up at the dog show and have Pluto winning it. Also, how did Pluto manage to enter without an owner? And now we get to see the judge from the front. So, yes, the anthropomorphic dogs are judging the actual dogs. I don't know if that's redundant or racist. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, then you have to wonder, okay, would the anthropomorphic dogs actually be pretty good judges because they are part dog and so they would have more insight into dogs? Maybe. Or is that just a totally racist comment that I just made? Assuming that they would know more about dogs because they're dog-like. Though it's kind of like if we were judging monkeys, which we kind of scientifically do. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's the picnic. Then everyone piled back into Mickey's car, with Pluto in the midst of them. And they all went back to Mickey's house to celebrate the triumph with lots of ice cream and cake. Huh. Well, I predicted one thing, that they would be celebrating at the end. It's kind of like a standard thing for this era. But I really expected them to, like, go all around town, then, huh, well, let's all go back to my house. Go back to his house, and there's Pluto going, hi. But no, a dog show. A, a dog show. Yeah. And isn't Mickey at all... I mean, I know he's excited that they found Pluto, but isn't he disappointed that he didn't get to go fishing? Yeah, I was also thinking that we should have started out with, like, maybe some type of hint that there was a dog show going on in the beginning of the book. Because there, there was absolutely no hint anywhere that that was a possibility. Yeah, otherwise we probably would have, like, well, knowing their sense of humor, he's going to be at the dog show. Yeah, well, we didn't know there was a dog show. And... Considering the title is Mickey Mouse and Pluto Pup, you would have think we see Pluto sooner than the last couple of pages. Also, I didn't realize his full name is Pluto Pup, because I've always just heard Pluto. Well, earlier on. Like I said, I didn't know that Horace was an Esquire. I'm like, wow, I, my, my Disney rating is going down today. <laughs> and this golden book is old enough that the back cover is different it's not the standard one that we've been seeing on our other books and I cut to that so quickly because I was actually looking at it while I was waiting for Lux to set up the recording equipment they even have these little markers with a symbol a copyright symbol and some initials and there's a key down at the bottom telling which characters are licensed so the sun mark and WPD is Walt Disney Productions, so that's by Mickey and Donald, and Bam I'm guessing that's Bambi, it's a little off model, but it has the right designation. Mm -hmm. Then the triangle and WB is Warner Brothers, so we have that by Bugs, and then there's actually a third one for the Bob's Merrill Company, who has Raggedy Ann. Yeah, I was going to say, that looks a lot like Raggedy Ann. Mm-hmm. And then at the bottom, all other characters, Western Publishing Company, who yeah. is Little Golden Books. And since we probably didn't scan the back cover, it's Tootle on a train track, and he has open cars, and there are characters lounging in the cars, and then a couple of people standing off to the side, specifically Raggedy Ann and Bambi. Yeah, Mickey looks a little too happy, like he's about to fall out of his cart. And he's riding behind the little tugboat. And Donald gets to hold up the banner, the world of little golden books. Yep, and Bugs is just being himself, lounging in the cart. Yeah, but, you know, you have a lot of characters here. Because you have Tootles, you have the Saggy Baggy Elephant, you have the Tawny Brawny Lion, you have the Pokey Little Pup. I forget what the kitten's called. Wow. 
And like I said earlier, the tugboat. And even though we've gone through a lot of these, I have, I don't recognize any of the characters. We haven't read the books with any of those characters. I remember having this saggy baggy elephant, the tawny scrawny lion, and the pokey little pup, but I'm not sure they, they survived my transition to adulthood. Yeah. Because despite the large number of children's books I still have, I did actually thin them out. And just for curiosity's sake, the publishing date on this, because the design says we're going back a ways. Okay, so this was from the 11th printing in 1973. So this particular book I have my hands on. But the copyright is 1953. Ooh. So we're, we're going back a ways. And yeah, the Disney books actually had a separate numerical designation. Mm. But not the Warner Brothers ones. Because Bugs Bunny's carrot machine is right here in the how many little golden books have you read as just a plain number. But you go to the very end and they specifically have D's in front of them for the Mickey, for Mickey, Disney is Mickey, for the Disney ones. And they also have an asterisk behind them designating them at the bottom as Walt Disney books. Yeah, Disney is Mickey to the point where Disney keeps breaking copyright law, well, altering it anyways, to keep him within their copyright. That would be an interesting one. Disneyland on Parade. Hmm. Because, you know, Disney did a lot of books and specials and stuff to highlight their parks. All right, so this has been Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse and Pluto Pup. Told by Elizabeth Beecher. Pictures by the Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Campbell Grant. It must have been an animation. Yeah, it, it must have. I wonder if the animation gave clues that there was a dog show. Yeah. Because, you know, this was adapted. Also, generously donated by Sasami-chan. Thank you. Okay, so this was a fun book. No idea if it's still in print, considering back in the 70s it was on its 11th printing. But, you know, they're little golden books. They never really go away. We'll put a link up for you if we can. Also, if we happen to take the time to look for the animation and find a match to prove our theory, we'll put a link up for that as well. Thank you again for listening.